Alrighty. So, uh, welcome to my island. <laughs> um, today is September 19th, 2020. And I just, uh, the significance of this for me is that it's the anniversary of my cancer diagnosis. And So yeah, um, it's been a whole year since uh, learning that I had squamous cell carcinoma, and uh, which for most people manifests as a skin cancer, but for me was uh, a thumb size. Uh, tumor on my on my tonsil and uh, three lymph nodes in my neck were as big as uh, jumbo eggs and I started treatment February 12th after four months of building up my immune system and getting into the best shape of my life except for the fact that I was killing myself and then uh, two chemo infusions of uh, approximately 300, 200 uh, milligrams apiece, three weeks apart. In the first 11 days, uh, that thumb-sized tumor disappeared. just from the chemo that I started on February 12th. And then I went, after the second infusion on March 4th, I went 26 days without eating. And the first 15 days, 14 days, with just water. The first thing I started with was uh, some miso soup with with uh, toasted, <laughs> toasted seaweed in it. The first solid food, I guess, besides the seaweed, was uh, was some some ramen that I, I ate on the uh, on the 30th of March. After <laughs> the day I was diagnosed a year ago today, I was I weighed 119. Excuse me, what am I saying? I weighed 299 pounds, and. The day I started eating, I weighed 150. Stretching it a little bit. It was probably close to 145. <laughs> but I never checked. I just knew it was less than 150. Um, and as of two days ago, I, I weigh uh, about 183. I lost about... 
a quarter of my my calves and uh, about a third of my of my thighs muscle mass and that's basically what I lived off of what my body lived off of while I was not eating and then I started my, my hot spring tour I found these amazing hot springs called Miracle Hot Springs of all things on the um, in the southern Sierra on the Kern River about four miles west of Lake Isabella the town of Lake Isabella and about 45 miles east of Bakersfield it's in the Sequoia National Forest and there's seven pools the hottest one is 118 it's right on the river and I um, just ate it up and I'm so grateful and I'm always on my way back there I they've become my my new favorite uh, hot springs in California which is a good thing because you know I was really looking forward to going to Cougar Hot Springs and Bagby Hot Springs and all this sort of stuff and I I got within probably about 15 miles after Burning Man and uh, um, the Blue River fire had just started like an hour be hour or two before I got there and uh, I got a little too close to it closer than I cared to almost got caught I drove down a road and got to a point where I actually saw the fire I turned around and started back up the same road and a, in that interim in that little you know what maybe three minutes a tree had fallen across the road and uh, luckily you know I had reception I was able to see there was a bridge between the two and I was able to cut across the bridge and get back across the Mackenzie River and out of there but man and then Bagby <laughs> I got I tried to go to Bagby the next day and uh, ran into the largest fire in the state. So anyway, my hot spring tour is more of a looks like the end of the world is on fire tour through Oregon and Washington. Um, it was a an amazing moment uh, during the um, experience where I had to advocate for myself um, I had to stand up and follow my my gut and say to the radiation doctor that I was suspending radiation treatments And it turns out that was the right thing to do because I probably wouldn't be here today if I hadn't, certainly not in this condition, um, if I hadn't done that then. Big lesson. But the cancer for me is in throat chakra. Throat chakra is all about trusting in the truth of your relationship with the one the source of the one it's about the word made manifest it's about manifesting it's about our connection to the universal source of supply and all wealth it's about integrity and hello trips me out and people you say hello to them and they're like you know six feet away say hello to them and they pretend like you don't even there's just you and 
them and they pretend like you don't even exist. It always trips me out, you know? Yeah. So, throat chakra, obviously a crisis in throat chakra. So, this, a big part of, of the throat chakra is, is all about realizing your, your true wealth and your connection to all wealth. And which is, you know, ultimately divinity, realizing your immortal nature. And as a person who spent my professional life attempting to communicate <laughs> uh, what, what some might say are, are complex ideas, um, and the sacred geometry and metaphysics and all that it's kind of interesting to be faced with this challenge but you know I had a spiritual acceleration where I was in a state of bliss 24 hours a day for nearly three months back in the winter of 1993-94 and you know that that was a pivotal moment in my existence an awakening of course and through it all, and ever since then, you know, I recognize this and practice this relationship with the source of all that is. And one time, I was in a uh, in a canoe that went down in the channel between Christmas Tree Island and Key West, Florida and in a storm and it was one of those moments where you could die and I had I had my uh, life jacket on I had a brand new whistle I had a brand new flashlight as you're supposed to brand new I just bought them that morning which was magnificent because uh, the new batteries you pro probably saved us um, and just before I we left shore I put the put the made sure the whistle was right outside of the easily to grab outside of the, the life jacket and we start canoeing, we get out about, I don't know, just past the dock, and the canoe was swamped, and we went straight down, and I grabbed our packs, I grabbed the canoes, I grabbed the, the um, oars, and I don't know how I held on to all that stuff, and I went to grab for the whistle, and the whistle was gone. <laughs> I had on a rose quartz necklace and then the, the necklace broke. The whistle was gone, but the necklace was still on my neck. It was caught between the, the life jacket and my neck. And right then, I'm like, <laughs> you know, what up universe? Right then, I look up, I look straight, I just look straight in, in front of me, and there is one of the most beautiful moonrises I've ever seen in my life. This, the moon was just this like peach, and the, the, the craters looked this magnificent um, blue purple, and just the whole, it was, it was easily one of the most beautiful moonrises I've ever seen. And I was just like, here I am in this weird, you know, in the ocean, holding on to everything I own. And there is the most beautiful, one of the most beautiful moonrises. And I'm just like, wow, that's so beautiful. <laughs> oh, 
oh my goodness. The reason I mention that story is because um, it was obviously a life-threatening situation, very much like what I've just been through. And there are times when, like that, when you you know that you're facing death, and you know it's still a choice. You still have something you can do about it. And it's not completely out of your hands. And, and in each time, I felt very uh, calm. And like, all I can do is what I can do right now. <laughs> like right then, all I could do is appreciate that moon. You know, that's what it was for. I mean, if I had to die right then, at least I was looking at one of the best moonrises I've ever seen in my life, you know? Um, this winter, going through the, the cancer treatments and everything, I felt, um, I certainly faced um, death several times and uh, two of those times happened in the same day and I, I uh, it was amazing death revealed itself to me without it wasn't threatening or anything like that it just revealed itself to me and what it is and uh, perhaps you can only gain this understanding from being in that situation but from the beginning I recognize this whole thing is 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 part of a it's my shamanic journey every one of us has a shamanic journey whether we're aware of it or not right now we're we each one of us is going through it. That's the most important aspect of our being. Whether we're aware of it or not. We're only aware of it if it serves us to be aware of it. We're not going to be aware of it if to be aware would get in the way or interfere with whatever it is we're here to teach ourselves. We're seeking to, to teach ourselves or remind ourselves or awaken or initiate whatever our, our course of initiation is. That's what comes first. And so for me, this whole journey has been about honoring the call, recognizing the shamanic journey, that everything that transpires Recognizing that everything that transpires is part of the shamanic journey.
so. sense the radiation treatment started in March. And um, they irradiated everything from here, from the top of my lip, down to about here, and all the way back. Uh, since then, I uh, I haven't uh, I haven't trimmed my beard, <laughs> and I, and what it, what happened is uh, initially it all came out by itself there was one time I was going to shoot a video to kind of explain to people what was happening and I, I, I just went like this with my beard and all this hair came out in my hand and, and uh, but it was all <laughs> it was all on one side it looked kind of funky so I had to pull it all out before I could shoot the video and um, and from then on you know, for a couple of months, I was I was essentially bald faced, and the skin felt amazing because the skin was all the skin was all um, um, brand new, new cells. You know, felt like felt so soft. And then when the hair started to come back in, it felt really soft. And uh, I just, I just love going like this, just feeling it, because it was, it was really cool. Um, the radiation is cumulative, and um, it'll, it's acting in me right now. It, so I have all this, this cisplatin. I like to think of, of uh, one of the things that I, I did for, for my. Uh, my morale. Um, I had this little mental bubblegum game I would play where I, I think that I was, uh, um, I tell myself that uh, the whole um, experience was, was like superhero. I was becoming a superhero, right? And you know how the superhero becomes a superhero by, you know, they're just a normal everyday person and then then they they experience some kind of weird thing happen to them and then you know often there's some kind of like radiation involved right and uh, and they come out the other side changed and realize their superpowers and so forth right so so there I was uh, getting infused with with, with 400 milligrams of a platinum-based uh, chemotherapy. And it's like, it's like, like a two liter bottle of that stuff in, inside of me. Uh, actually two two liter bottles because it, it happened twice. And, and then the, the platinum which is, you know, it's designed to go to every one of your cells, is irradiated. <laughs> it's irradiated, right? So the platinum is radioactive now, and they, they, that combination, it, it attacks fast-growing cells, right? The cancer is a fast-growing cell, so it gets, it gets killed. And uh, so I'm Platinum Man. Platinum Man! <laughs> you want to know what my superpowers are? Okay, so my superpowers are initially one of them was uh, being so sensitive that I could tell what was in whatever water I was drinking. 
um, or trying to drink. I could detect the metal in in water. So the house I was staying in had a, a Congan water machine, but it, um, which is really good alkaline water, right? Except the water came through copper pipes, and the Congan water didn't take out all the all the the, uh, the filter didn't take out all the copper and so I just could taste copper and it was awful so I got to the point where I could only drink Mountain Valley spring water chilled it was room temperature I couldn't drink it yeah that was a superpower but one of my superpowers is I've been realizing is this tremendous sensitivity to energy um, I don't even know what to say about that but um, subtle energy I'm, I'm very sensitive to I, I can douse now <laughs> I've been dowsing and You know, there's a certain amount of telepathy. And yeah, it's still, it's still unfolding because one of the things that I've learned in the past year on this journey is that uh, the cancer, hello, the cancer. Yeah, 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 yeah. About 50 yards. Um. The cancer is, is just an initiation. Um, Goodness, it's like it is the other way. So, what I was saying is that one of the main things that I've been come to realize is that this cancer experience was just the beginning of my initiation. It feels like it's it's just the beginning, <laughs> you know? and there's a part of me that just kind of wants to get to the point. And uh, I'll let you know when I get there. So anyway, uh, what I was might as well get to this before. Uh, we lose the light. I wanted to um, want to uh, there we go. I'm gonna trim my beard for my anniversary. 
yeah he is. How about that? Busted out the, the big scissors, the big scissors, and the travel mirror. Can you see yourself? Is it infinite? There we go. Where's the, oh, there we go. Let's do. Yeah. Well, that was fun. <laughs> Trippy hippie. Somebody uh, said to me the other day, they said, you look very, uh, your beard looks very Santa Clausy. <laughs> Santa Clausy. Oh my goodness. I don't know if that's a good thing. I don't know if we're going for the Santa Claus look necessarily, but you know, we do what we can. All right. So yeah, on the anniversary of the diagnosis, David is trimming his cancer beard. Another weird thing about the experience was not that anybody knows how long we have to live or anything, but um, from a year ago today until I saw the oncologist in the beginning of November, I think the 6th of November or something like that, um, I didn't know how long I had to live. <laughs> so you know, there's that thing where that question, kind of like a party question, it's like, what would you do if you didn't know how long you had to live? Well, I can tell you. I can tell you exactly what I would do. Now, Of course, the first thing you're going to do is you, you, you want to be where, where you really want to be in this life while you still can be someplace, right? Luckily for me, I was exactly where I wanted to be, you know? I was in Venice Beach. So, you know, for most people, I guess... They'd have to go get some place. But I was exactly where I wanted to be. Whew. This
this used to be the style around what when was that like uh around the civil war i can tell it feels really weird because this is warm and this isn't <laughs> This is this is like uh, um, the yellow submarine captain. That's the way he had his thing. Right, right, right. We're losing the light here. All right, get to it, man. Get it over with. <laughs> this is Spence. This is Spence. She is killing, killing me. I think we want to do a two-part version of this because and uh, what's that brother's name that actor Sam Elliott looks like I'm I'm getting a Sam Elliott mustache <laughs> Sam Elliott mustache goodness Should work on my draw. This is the side that had the my right side. The side that had the solo nymph, no, lymph nodes. Nymph nodes. I'll have some. Right. So the reason why I'm shooting this so late in the day is uh, it didn't start earlier is because I was actually painting the ceiling of the bus. You can't really see it now, <laughs> but it's now dark blue. In keeping with the theme. Of my blueness. Yeah, it's getting a little too dark for this. Probably going to have to clean it up tomorrow. Where I can actually see what I'm doing as opposed to guesstimating. I mean, I mean. Man, that mustache is crazy. Okay. That's enough for now. Let's see what they look like. Something like that. So another another thing that that came gift from the universe that came from from all of this. Um, you see, there's a, a couple of teeth that are cracked, chipped. Um, that's because I, a year ago. Oh, this you have to see this. This is friggin' beautiful. What are we looking at here? Okay. There we go.
Yeah. So, um... What is this? Yeah. Hey there. <laughs> so I lost my train. Big surprise. Um, the beard. Oh well. Don't come to me. Okay. <laughs> I'm I'm feeling like you know maybe maybe it maybe it's time to um, say good evening. Good evening.